At the end of this video, you've built a local retrieval augmented generation system with N8N, Olama, and the Quadrant Vector Database. The workflow that we're building in this video consists of two parts. First of all, the RAG pipeline, and secondly, the actual RAG chatbot. Now, this RAG pipeline includes a form so you can take any PDF document and as many as you want and ingest them into the database. Now, the RAG system that we are building today, including N8N, the large language model, and the Quadrant Vector database, all run locally on my machine. Now, if you want this local AI setup as well, definitely check out the installation guide that I published earlier. But for now, let's get started with building the rack. So as I mentioned, I'm going to start with building the data ingestion process. So click on add first step and search for the N8N form. And this is the one that you need on new N8N form event. We're going to give a form a title. And then we're going to click here on add form element and except from the button, I actually only need one element and that's the field where we can add PDF files. So let's give our element a name and then search for file and make sure that you allow adding multiple files right here. And the only format that I'm going to allow is .pdf and this is also going to be a required field. So once we've created our form, we can go back to the canvas. And now we're going to add the files that have just been uploaded to the semantic database. So click here on the plus icon, then search for quadrant. And this is the one that you need, quadrant vector store. So just click on this one. And in the rec pipeline, we want to add documents to our vector store. So just click here. And then you see by default, we connect with our local quadrant API database. And of course we want to insert documents, select from list, and then just make sure that you click here on fixed. And then we're going to give our collection a name, which is going to be something like Rack Chatbot. And then let's just navigate back to the canvas. So once we've added the Quadrant Vector Store, there are still some items which we have to add. And the first one is an embeddings model. So click here on embeddings. And of course you can use any embedding model that you want. For example, the embeddings OpenAI model. But if you want to work with the local model that we have installed in a previous video, then click here on embeddings Olama. And Lama 3.2 is not an embeddings model, so you have to change this to the embeddings model that we have installed earlier, which is this one. Then navigate back to the canvas. Let's just make some space here. And now we also have to configure how we want to chunk the documents. So just click here on the plus icon. And then we're going to add the default data loader, like this. And the only thing that we have to change here is we want to change the data type from JSON to binary. And we just want to uh, load all the input data. Let me get back to the canvas. And now you see that there is a new option here, which is the text splitter. And this is really important because here you're going to configure how you want to chunk the document. So click here on the plus icon. And now we're going to choose for the recursive character splitter, which is recommended for most use cases. So click here. And here we're going to define the chunk size. So if you have semantically very simple documents, you're going to set this very low. I'm going to put it on uh, 400 for now. And the chunk overlap is the overlap in characters with regards to the chunks. So I definitely recommend that you make this at least, let's say one fourth of the chunk size. So I'm going to set it at 100. And now we've already finalized the creation of the ingestion process. And if you want to add all these nice colored boxes that separate the different parts of your automation, then just hover over the plus icon and you will see this icon popping up, add sticky note. And these are the colored boxes that you've seen in some of the other flows. So I'm just going to widen this one a bit. And then let's call this flow the rack ingestion process. Now congratulations with building your first rack pipeline. Now let's continue with building the actual rack chatbot. Now let's add a new component and I'm going to search for chat and this is the one you need, chat trigger. So we want this rack to be triggered as soon as a new chat message is being received. So let's just go back because we don't have to configure any fields here. And then let's continue by adding an AI agent. So click on the plus icon, click on AI, and this is the one you need, AI agent. So add it right here. We're going to navigate back. I'm going to add a system prompt later. And the first thing that we need here is a chat model. So click on the plus icon. And the one that we need is an Ulama chat model. And here we actually need the Llama 3.2 chat model because this is a chat model and not an embeddings model. Then we're also going to add some memory to our AI agent. So click on plus and then just select simple memory like this. And then we also have to provide it access to a tool. So click here on tool. 
And then of course, this is going to be the quadrant vector store. So just select here quadrant vector store and the default configuration should be correct. So this should be local quadrant API database retrieve documents as tool for AI agent. And we have to give this um, tool a name. So I'm just going to call it database retriever. And I'll make sure that here the quadrant collection is ex exactly the same as the collection that you have defined earlier in um, this step here. So just copy this part right here, navigate back, and then just uh, click here on fixed and provide here rack chatbot. The limit is the number of chunks that can be retrieved from the semantic database. So you can set this either lower or higher depending on how many chunks you want to get from the semantic database. Let's make some space here. And then we also have to provide here an embedding model. And this is exactly the same embedding model that we also have added here. So you can either link it or you can create a new instance of an embedding model. I'm going to link it like this. But let's add again a colored box just to keep track of the different um, components of this system like this. And then let's also change the color. So click here on this color picker. Well, let's make this one green, for example, and let's make this one then red, like this. Now there was one thing which enhances the quality of this system, and that is adding an actual system prompt. So first of all, I'm going to check the name of this tool. So just copy this one, navigate back, then click on the AI agent. And then you see here, um, no properties, add option. And here I'm going to add a system message. Well, let's make sure that you change the name of the workflow like this. And then I have a file about my own pizza restaurant. And this is the file that I'm going to use in this rack chatbot. You can download this file from the link in the description. And then in Docker, you can find the self-hosted AI starter kit. And here you can find the quadrant container. So I'm just going to click here. And then let's add dashboard like this. And then here you can find all the collections that we have already added to the database. So let's have a get back to the N8N workflow. And then let's start with the data ingestion process. So just hover over this item, click execute workflow. They will see the form popping up. You can pick your file, in this case the pizza menu, click on submit. And now this file will be added to the semantic database. And if I now navigate back to the Quadrant database, navigate to collections, you will see that the Rack Chatbot collection has been added. So click on Rack Chatbot, and then you will see all the chunks which have been added here to the semantic database. So depending on your chunk size, there are either less or more chunks than you see here in my example. Navigate back to the Chatbot, because now we can actually run the Chatbot. So hover over when chat message received, click on Open Chat, and now I can ask questions about the pizza restaurant. And now you will see that we get back a chat message with all the pizzas right here. So I really hope this video was useful for you. If it was, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you back in my next video where we're going to build an actual AI agent.